After two weeks of Legacy League's action, we have three undefeated teams and three teams still searching for their first win. But hey, we'll be back next week before we take a little winter break and we'll see if some of those teams can get a win. But first, let's break down the week two action here from InSports in Connecticut. I'm here with the guys. I get to do names again. This is awesome. Eddie, Ryan, Nathan, Meyer, and David. Nailed it, I think. No one's upset, so that's a good sign. I'm Joey, Tyler behind the camera. Weekly rebound guys are around. Half of them are fist pumping behind the camera. Don't be distracted, <laughs> I know it's hard not to look at him. So guys, we'll start with two very, very good games tonight. Uh, down to the wire finishes. We'll start with the Chasers, who are one of those 2-0 teams. And actually, Nick Strong is one of those winless teams after two losses, obviously, through two weeks. 66-64. Dom Langston made some clutch free throws. They had a chance down three with the ball, drove in and lost the ball. Didn't even get a chance at a, a time three-point attempt. You know, uh, some of you guys made comments about Nick Strong, the, the great team, as you guys are still calling them. We'll get to them in a second. What did the Chasers do tonight to impress you guys? Yeah, well, you mentioned Don Langston. He had 22 points. Really, it was just, it was kind of a sloppy game. You know, a lot of turnovers, poor defense. I talked to Larry Little after the game. He said, you know, we got to work on defense. Um, but other than that, the Knicks round played like they wanted to win. Um, they, I said in the power rankings, you know, they're a team to look out for. They're a dark horse. And so. what about Nick Strong, uh, you know, stood out? I mean, I know they're 0-2. They might be the one of the best 0-2 teams. We'll get to Young Kings in a second. But um, what did Nick Strong do to, to impress you guys in the loss? And Bill, you were, you were up Nick Strong's butt earlier. Anything? Uh, <laughs> no, I was, oh. I was just trying to see Oh, you were on Shocker yeah, City. Yeah. We'll get to them in a second. Anybody on Nick Strong? I mean, Nick Strong played well. I mean, they played well enough to win in the last two games, but free throws been really been hurting them. Again, to the line so much, and it's not making them. But Indiana, as we said before, Dominic Langston, this is way too big inside for them. But Nick Strong was good enough to win this week and last week. Those free throws are just yeah. really killing them. Yeah, I think they missed their first 13 or 14 free throws over the first five-ish quarters. It's not going to help when you're in close games and you're missing free throws. Flint Tropics, Team Moose. Flint Tropics, one of the other undefeated teams. Team Moose falls to 1-1 one one after losing 58-54 to the Flint Tropics. Was talking to Dom before the game. He's like, I guess this is a rivalry. I don't know. I'm new to Flint Tropics. They don't like Team Moose. I don't know why. Well, it got a little physical, a little chippy. Um, that's what happens when two teams who are evenly matched, I think we would say, uh, take the court. Flint Tropics, though, undefeated, come away with the win. Really impressed with how they played down the stretch. I think they made some big plays. What'd you guys see? I mean, going into this, we knew it was going to be a high-powered game. Flint, great offensive team. Team Moose, unbelievable defensive team. I saw Team Moose get out to a 13-4 to run to start the first quarter, win the first quarter 18-9. to Since then, Flint kind of brought it all together, was able to win out every quarter and overtime. Um, Bizzuto and Gianni combined for 37 to Flint's 58. And I talked to Bizzuto after the game, and he said the key factor to the win was the team's depth. And I think T.J. Gianni, a couple big, big momentum swinging oh, yeah. dunks. Uh, and that's what that team rides on. They, they're very play together, team oriented. And when I mean, Ryan Caggiano had one right here earlier in the game, when that happens, you see them all kind of get that pep in their step. And they needed it tonight. They needed every bit of it tonight. Anything else? It was a good game. Very yeah. entertaining. <laughs> well put. Very, very good game. <laughs> and we'll definitely, I'm sure, see these teams again, uh, hopefully, in the playoffs. Um, they had a couple playoff matchups. Um, we had Kevin Blake showing the antlers uh, to Snapchat a couple seasons ago in the playoffs. So, uh, yeah, they know each other well, that's for sure. Speaking of the Young Kings, our next closest game, 98-85, Shocker City 2-0. We're getting through all these uh, undefeated teams. Young Kings 0-2, we talked about maybe one of the better 0-2 teams. We said it was a couple-point game in the third, right? Uh, and then a 13-point loss to Shocker City. You were playing. Uh, what did you guys see from uh, the sidelines yeah. as far as the Young Kings? So, like you said, they uh, they won by 13. But um, the thing that really stood out is that they had that full court press right in the beginning of the game and then had that 18-point lead right off bat. And then, um, I believe, the, no, the Young Kings didn't bat down. They actually uh, were 16 on full run, and they were only down by two. And then Mike Davis just came in high. He had 30 points at 7-3, 60-30% from three. And, yeah, they just couldn't stop Sounds about right. You were talking about Mike Davis and uh, his crossover. Oh, my stuff. God. He had a mean has he? Oh. It was probably one of the top plays. <laughs> All Definitely right. The Stay tuned for that on top plays. Um, Young Kings quickly. 0-2. Who do you guys get next week? 
Flint. So Flint. Great, well, gave us a great schedule. Bet, so uh, I don't know who did that. You can bring <laughs> it up with the head of scheduling. But uh, a couple new additions this week. If you want to touch on them quickly? I mean, Destin Simmons. I mean, it was a guy that we needed scoring, and he uh -huh. brought like 25 points in his first game with us. I mean, he did everything. He was making threes, handling the ball, and when the press picked up, they got some confidence. The press started coming, and he was a guy that really got us to calm down. He used to play for them, so he kind of right. knew some things. So he, we're really happy with him. And DJ, he's a big guy. He had a kind of a rough game today, but we're, I think we're heading in the right direction. And not to Eddie. You know, some good threes over there. Huh? I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, uh, three-point contest champ from a season ago. Yep. Yeah, it was last season. It feels like longer ago. It does feel forever. Yeah. Um, but, yes, last season, speaking of threes and continuity, all of those things were not happening for Run TMC tonight as they fall to sports. Look, 77-61. Uh, stop laughing, all you guys over there. I don't want to hear it. But no Eric Langston. Uh, you guys got to see Reggie Stewart for the first time, but credit to sports. Look, I mean, yeah, you only play who shows up on the other side, and that goes for all teams. And so uh, they use that size advantage uh, for sure throughout the game. And we're also hitting some shots, and that helps when you get that combination. Uh, would you guys, you know, sports looks first win. They're on the board. What you guys see from that? I want to talk about an upset, man. I mean, the same thing that happened to you guys last week. You guys were just missing the depth. Ultimately, sports look, I mean, I hate to do it to you, but it was kind of one sided the mm -hmm. entire game. But, I mean, I'm not worried. You guys are going to be fine. Once you guys get your depth path, you guys are going to be fine. It just means there's some room on the bandwagon. So we get to <laughs> pick up, put our feet up, spread out a little bit. We, we, can, we can open the doors later. You're yeah. Uh, on Sports Look, though, um, they had some really good contributions from a lot of their players, some, some new guys to the league. Yeah, like Jeff Norco came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. 34 points. Been Unbelievable. Human highlight reel. Had a couple really nice dunks. Hopefully those will be on the top plays, but he killed it. For sure. And so we'll look out for them as they take on the Chasers next week. So they'll need more of that physical play against the Chasers, who we saw just now, uh, very recently on this court, use that size against Nick Strong to their advantage. Speaking of size, the Rim Breakers, you guys got to see Gerald McLeese, I believe, for the first time over there. As they win 96-41, they improved to 1-1. One because they lost last week, but they were a team in the semis last year. They'll be a team to keep an eye on. As they take down Gentlemen's Club, another 0-2 team, um, Richard Brunson, Gerald McQuist, we're going to talk about these guys a lot on that team. But they're a team, like I mentioned, with size, length, and they've played together. So that continuity factor, um, they definitely have that down. Yeah, it was really an all-around team effort that I think they had six guys scoring the double digits. Like you said, Gerald McQuist yeah, led the team with 22 points. And they got out to a fast start, 22-8 uh, to eight in the first quarter. From there, they really didn't look back. But it wasn't just an offensive showcase. Uh, they really showed that they are one of the better defensive teams in the league. They had a lot of steals, a lot of takeaways, a lot of blocks, actually. And you could really sense the team chemistry that they had. They were, they were uh, jocking around with each other on the bench. <laughs> and it, I think it's going to bode well for them as the season goes on. Yeah, the Rimbreakers, they're a really big team. They yep. can make some noise. Yep. And I think they're just as talented as any team in this league. I mean, I feel like they've gone under the radar this year so far, yep. but they had some great dunks tonight. They really played as a team. They're making jump shots. So I feel like they're still a, I mean, they're a semifinal, semifinal team, but I feel like right. they're still a sneaky team in this league. That's one of the things even last year we talked about with them a lot. They have the size, the length. That comes every game. So you don't got to worry about that. When they're hitting jump shots, they're a different team. And they were hitting them in the playoffs last year. That's why they got as far as they did. And so they'll definitely be looking to keep that up. Next week, some of the big games, Rim and TMC, Chasers and Sports Look. No offense, I'm not, not going to talk about Flint. I was going to talk about Flint Young Kings. Of those three, <laughs> Flint Young Kings, Chasers, Sports Look. You're you going to upset them? That's the plan, right? That's the plan. All right. TMC, Rim Breakers, Chasers, Sports Look, Flint Young Kings. Quickly, one or two words on one of those matchups that you're going to be looking for to watch. After what I saw tonight, I'm looking at Sports Look. I really think they can put it's it together. Way more than two words. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. Sports look is your team to watch. Okay, team to watch next week in those matchups. I like it. Rim breakers. Okay, against TMC. That'll be a semifinal rematch. I like it. The Chasers. Two big bodies. Yep, and they exactly. Two big teams going at it in Chasers and Sports Look. I think Team Moose bounces back from this loss. And they won't be here next week, so great transition. Never mind that. Thank you. <laughs> no, good job. So they actually get a week off with Nick Strong. And they're going to move that game later on. But you have to wait to see Moose and Nick Strong. So we only have eight teams next week before we get into that winter break. Team for you to watch besides yours. That's not fair. Uh, I don't know. I think, I feel like Shocker City, I mean, they 
Yes, they won a close game today, but they're so talented. I mean, Mike Davis literally just carried them in the second half. I was playing in the game, but we literally had hands in, in his face uh -huh. and fade away three. So I feel like Shocker City is going to have a big game next week after we gave him a little, made him a little nervous there. Yeah, I think they'll uh, give the gentlemen's club some of the uh, yeah, that'll be that, that you caused them. Yeah, that'll put a wrap on the week two post game show. Good job, guys. Very good job, Tyler, behind the camera, as always, just looking dapper. Uh, we will be back for week three before we take two weeks off, and we are back in 2019. It's almost over. In 2018, that is, not 2019. We have a long Legacy League season ahead, and uh, we'll see you for week three from InSports. That's it. See ya.